In my efforts to get the most realistic sound possible, I had to try a lot of variations. Here I'm brushing away the grit from the paving slab pieces and then covering them with the ground sheet to avoid the obvious concrete sound. This seemed to work okay for my own footsteps, but I wasn't sure I could pretend to be 60% lighter when it came to acting as my son's feet. The gloves I'm using are thick rubber ones for heavy household chores. I reasoned that they might sound a little like Louis's trainers, but I was never completely happy with the sound, and as we'll see shortly, I ultimately had to modify them quite drastically even to get close. It simply wasn't working, and I could hear some sound I didn't like, so I tried adding some more sharp sand under the ground sheet. I added too much at first and had to start again, using my fingers to control the amount. Still not right. Try again. By this time I was pretty irritated by the sound of the gloves. I had begun to realise that going for the rubber material had brought its own slew of problems with it. After another attempt I had a listen, but it was still unusable. Basically the cuffs of the gloves were flapping around too much on my arms. This clearly called for drastic action, and really there was only one answer. But at that time of night, and with tiredness creeping upon me, amazingly I didn't see it straight away. Finally, I managed to think of the solution, just off the cuff. Ta-da! Much better. What I'm doing between takes, by the way, is called comping. Basically, instead of recording each sound in one take, I put the computer into a loop mode and record many takes in one go using the same video clip. I then have to sit at the desk for a while, listening back to all the takes and choosing the best one for each individual sound. This takes a while, but it's worth doing in order to get the very best recording. Sometimes I would forget to set up the loop mode, and the video would run on afterwards, making me get up again so that I could do more takes. Don't try this if you have bad knees. I still wasn't happy with the sound on some of the shots. There's a wide variety of terrain in the woods, and sometimes the gloves sounded just too rubbery. 
It took quite a lot of creative willpower just to keep me from giving up, chucking on a DVD and cracking open a beer. Plus, my shoes were starting to feel like medieval torture instruments, and I was starting to wish that the real Louis were here with his actual feet doing the job properly. And I think at this point I realised that once again I'd forgotten to turn on the loop mode. Nowadays of course I just use my iPad to control the sequencer from right next to me on the floor. Here I'm doing my impression of a gorilla. I think it only fair since a gorilla in the Jersey Zoo once did an impression of me. Notice that I'm actually twisting my fists as they land, a bit like a karate punch. This adds a scraping effect, like the sound made by a shoe as it pushes off from gritty ground. OK, that was just a little taster of what it was actually like to go through the experience in real time. I'll now show Mercy and return you to your comfortable time-lapse eye view. And on goes the kettle. While making my tea, I tried out the sound of the straw and played about with the glove off cuts a bit to see if I could use them for anything. Experimentation is crucial to all sound effects work. In the small hours, it's easy to imagine hearing things going bump in the night. What's that noise? Who's making noise? And even easier to imagine them when the slightest owl's hiccup from a hundred yards outside the house is picked up by a sensitive microphone. Okay, what you've just seen um, was two hours compressed into a short time and uh, basically all I've got done is the footsteps of Louis on dirt paths out oh, and me as well but I'm, that's hardly any of those so that includes walking and running through the whole film so that's ten minutes of one type of sound took me two hours a big job. Bye for now.